I've got a couple things to talk about here. Just want to piggyback real quick on uh, what, what Leon was saying about the, the body's place that we did this uh, this past uh, Saturday, yesterday, I guess. They seem to go quick. It seems like a week ago. But um, anyway, um, it sure seemed like we had a lot more presence than what was listed in, in the bulletin. <laughs> But anyway, maybe I'm just maybe I'm just seeing things. Uh, but anyway, uh, one of the things that I got to do during the, the the Lottie's place is to actually talk to the people that are coming through, uh, to ask them if they had any any prayer requests and and whatnot. And this year it seemed a little bit different, maybe because we had to change the way we were doing things uh, with the the whole COVID and whatnot. But people just didn't seem to want to talk this year. Uh, maybe they just wanted to get their stuff and 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 go uh, because they were in the cars, they were ready to go. They just wanted to go. Uh, but I, I did have a few folks that, that came through and they requested prayer, uh, very specific things that they, that they wanted us to pray about. And on Wednesday night, we're, we're going to present those things too, that, that, and we're going to pray for those, those specific things. But uh, I would ask you, uh, as you go through this, this week, that you would be in, uh, in prayer as well for all those that, that came through requesting prayer. Um, uh, one or two of them were in tears for all the things that they were going through. So hopefully we can, uh, you know, we can uh, lift them up to the Lord and, and just, just try to make things better for them. And hopefully Lottie's place will, will make things better for them, uh, especially in, in, in a very eternal way for them that they can come to know the, the salvation of Jesus. Now the other thing that I wanted to talk about uh, was, the, uh, uh, was the Lottie Moon Christmas offering. And uh, you see in your out in your pews, maybe in front of you, you have these, these uh, little envelopes there. Uh, they're right there next to the normal offering envelopes. But these are for the Lottie Moon Chris, Christmas offering. Uh, these are for our uh, international uh, missionaries. Uh, these are the folks that, that go overseas to tell people about Jesus. Uh, you know, in, in China right now, China is actually one of the fastest growing ministries in the world. But let me tell you something, these missionaries that are over there, they, they are facing extreme persecution. A lot of times when they're over there talking about Jesus, they have to do so uh, under the cover of darkness, under the cover of a roof somewhere. They cannot do it out in the open. Uh, China, just like a, a lot of other countries in the world, uh, uh, these countries, if you are caught with a Bible in that country, they will throw you in jail and you will never be heard from again. That's just the simple truth. But yet these missionaries uh, that, that this money goes to, these missionaries are overseas, they're talking about Jesus, uh, they're putting their lives on the line, they're, they're putting their futures on the line, uh, they're over there doing it. So uh, this is a very good cause. So consider donating to the Lottie Moon Christmas offering. Uh, uh, when, is the, when is the deadline? It's when we reach $5,000. It's when we reach $5,000. So when we reach $5,000, I guess then we'll stop. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, as, you, as you make those donations to the Lottie Moon uh, Christmas offering for the International Missions Board, just, just keep those people in mind and continue to pray for them as well. Thank you.
Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for every single thing that you do. A lot of things that don't even come to mind, Lord, but we thank you. We thank you most of all for the salvation you've given in your Son that we accept in faith. Heavenly Father, be with the pastor as he delivers the message today and open hearts and minds to your word. Lord, we ask that you take this offering and use it to further your will here on this earth. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
Right. Now your kids can get out of here. Hey, don't say it like that. That, oh. that sounds like... You can stick around if you want. <laughs> oh, mercy. Killing me. So you can't even keep your hearing aids in. <laughs> and it's done drop. Y'all just excuse me a minute. You don't want to go on my ear. Now I got it. Alrighty. I'm glad to see you. Appreciate you being here this morning. Grateful to God that I'm able to be here with you. Preach you the preach to us the truth of God. I want you to turn with me, if you will, this morning. By the way, I don't know a person, a woman, who's got a better voice than that lady sitting right over there. Amen. I mean, I'm not trying to, you know, when you go to bragging on one, others will say, oh, I sing pretty good myself. But <laughs> I want to tell you right now, if that woman woke up as a kid and could sing like it, Lord have mercy. Is that, have you been able to sing all those times? You haven't. <laughs> how, how old were you when you learned you could sing? Well, I'm 64 now, so. <laughs> what did he say? What did she say? She's 64 now. Oh. oh, mercy. We won't go there. But I do appreciate, I, I sit over here, and when she sits behind me over there, I, I'd rather listen to her sing as me sing. <laughs> Because hers is a whole lot better. But she blesses me. I remember early on when I first came here years ago, I think about the time uh, Bob was going, he went out and spent three Sundays in Arizona or something like that, and I preached here. That's been a long time ago. I may have preached here before then, but I remember the choir. And, oh, it sounded good. And I know you miss that now. And those who are... Uh, not here because of sickness or whatever else. Uh, I, I, I agree with you about the need for prayer. As a matter of fact, I'll mention something that I wish you would pray for me about. And I've got so many notes up here this morning. I finally got, I learned how to print with my new computer. And but I messed up and printed a whole chapter of the Bible. <laughs> so I'm going to try to sort this out and get through this this morning. And uh, I won't, how many of you have ever had you, uh, when you get a hold of, what's, what's that thing that checks out you? Your background, your, your heredity. heredity. Ancestry.com. Uh, ancestry that's it. Have you ever had your ancestry.com done? My daughter did it for me and her mother. And she, if she hadn't have done it for her mama, she probably wouldn't have done it for me. But anyway. Oh, she, she's a doll. She told me one time she, uh, she's now 30, I was 40 and she was born, 37 years old. And, uh, and she's very talented. She, she used to make her cards, her Father's Day card, and one day on a Father's Day card, she wrote, Pops, I love you, uh, but at times you're a pain, and when you grow up, when I grow up and make a lot of money, I'm going to put you in the best nursing home I can find. <laughs> I got that card, that's not made up. I, got <laughs> I still got it, I cherish that, because she grew up and got married and loves her mom and daddy. That, and she's a baby, so we're tickled with having her close by. And, and uh, well, I was talking about uh, uh, our heritage. And uh, I'm fortunate to go back, and I, if I'm not telling you wrong, somewhere around 1784, a man moved to this area by the name of David Young. And that was my forebear. That's a long time back. I have a picture hanging in my hall that goes down, you know, down the middle of the building, and at the end of that is my great grandfather's picture. Uh, he, I have a, a written copy. A co it's not written copy. It's a copy of a written discharge from the uh, from the Confederate Army, hmm. 
And I don't know about anybody else, but I praise God. I'm an American. I'm great. I'm grateful to God. I was brought brought here. Uh, I'm grateful for. Uh, you remember the poem you read that that Sunday night last time you was here, I guess. That poem speaks it well. I wish everybody had a copy of that and read that about once a week for the next year, because it's the most encouraging thing. I found that online oh i don't know how many years ago and it got hid in my stacks of things and i was going through that and found it shared it with tony collins who's a pastor over there and he immediately put it up on his for uh, what is what is it they call what is it uh, what is it facebook. Uh, facebook you know i don't have facebook <laughs> you know what i don't want facebook i don't want no kind of i'm not being ugly and negative this morning i'm just saying that i believe that social media has done more to destroy america than anything ever that's ever even the television hadn't done what this has done but anyhow that's not what i'm going to talk about this morning i'm going to talk about the king uh <clears throat> i don't know about you uh let me let me just put it this way when you turn to read the story of the birth of Jesus in Matthew 1, where do you stop? Look at that. If, where do you start reading if you're going to read about the, the birth of the Lord Jesus? Look at it. If you got it open, just look at it. I'm not trying to trick you. I'm just trying to show you something. We go in at verse 18, don't we? Isn't that where we usually start? Verse 18, now the birth of Jesus Christ was in this way. And we read from there to the end of the chapter. But let me tell you this morning, there's something in those first verses that absolutely floats my boat. It thrills my soul when I realize that God loves sinners. God loves uh, God loves. Uh, a Gentile dog sinners like me. That's what the Jews called the Gentiles. Uh, uh, they're dogs. But God loves uh, go uh, godless sinners that are Jews or Gentiles. Hallelujah to God. That's why I want to talk to you this morning about, uh, about this uh, heritage, uh, the genealogy of Jesus. And uh, you'll note that... Uh, beginning with Abraham, uh, as we have here, the book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. I want to I wanna fill you in on a couple of things here. Uh, uh, this, this one is, uh, is the gentle, well, I'm getting ahead of myself, but let me just go on and do it while I'm talking about it. Matthew traces the legal descent like the uh, uh, you know the one who has the royal line from David to Sol through Solomon is what Matthew's talking to here and in the book of Luke you find the other genealogy and Luke is talking about uh, the bloodline from David through Nathan it stops at Nathan on both times uh, what I mean uh, the difference starts where, where it ends in the in uh, with Nathan now let me just read this to you if I may and uh, then uh, we'll uh, try to get through this this has been thrilling to my heart I had I had something I was type, typing out of a handwritten notes and God just shut me off I knew I wasn't supposed to do that. So I had been looking at this, and I've, I, it's been mm, 94 since the last time I preached it. <clears throat> so that's been a long time, but it jumps out at me, and I hope it'll jump out at you. Let me just read through those verses, and then we'll come back and look at what we want to do. Um, Abraham begot Isaac. And Isaac begot Jacob, and Jacob begot Judah and his brethren. And Judah begot Perez as, and Zerah of Tamar, and Perez and, uh, uh, begot Hezron, and Hezron begot Ram, and Ram begot Amminadab, 
And Amenadab begot Nashon, and Nashon begot Salmon, and Salmon begot Boaz of Rahab, and Boaz begot Obed of Ruth, and, and Obed begot Jesse, and Jesse begot David the king, and David the king begot Solomon of her that had been the wife of Uriah. And Solomon begot uh, Rehoboam, and Rehoboam begot Abijah, and Abijah begot Asa, Asa, and Asa begot Jehoshaphat, and Jehoshaphat got Jor begot Joram, and Joram uh, begot Uzziah, and Uzziah begot Jotham, and Jotham begot Ahaz, and Ahaz begot Hezekiah, and Hezekiah begot Manasseh, and Manasseh begot Am Ammon, and Ammon begot Josiah, and Josiah begot Jeconiah and his brethren. About the time they were carried away to Babylon. And after they were brought to Babylon, Jeconiah begot Shealtiel. -She that's, that's my closest guess at how to pronounce that. And Shealtiel begot Zerubbabel. And Zerubbabel got Abiud, uh, uh, Abiud. And Abiud begot Eliakim. And Eliakim begot Azor, Azor, and Azor begot Sadok, and Sadok begot Achim, and Achim begot Eliud, Eliud, I'll get it out right in a minute, and begot Eleazar, and Eleazar got Methan, and Methan begot Jacob, and Jacob begot Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born Jesus, who is called Messiah Christ. That's what the Messiah's name is in Greek, Christ. And so all of the generations from Abraham to David are 14 generations. From David, David to the carrying away of Babylon are 14 generations. And from the carrying away of Babylon unto Christ are 14 generations. Now we usually start there at verse 18. But I read all of that. And if you don't know what, what's there, you'll say, what in the world is that in there for? But I want to tell you, there's something here, there's something here that is worth paying attention to. I want us to know it. I want us to note, first of all, that no scripture is useless. Don't ever... Quit reading the scripture because it's never useless. If it's in here, it's worth it. God put it in there and he doesn't, he doesn't fill space with words that don't mean a hoot up a holler log. I'm here to tell you today, uh, God wants us to understand that uh, there's nothing useless in the Bible. Some passage may seem unprofitable at the first glance, but I'm here to tell you this morning, always remember that it's there for a purpose. So those 17 verses are there for a purpose. And until you realize and I realize what the purpose is, it'll never be meaningful to us. But I want us to, uh, 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 I want us to notice that the purpose of genealogies in Scripture is not only to trace the royal line of Israel, but also to outline, God deal, outline God's dealings with His people. Because when you come to these genealogies, they reveal, they reveal how, God's, how, God's, uh, 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 how God's dealing uh, with... Uh, with his people are and how his sovereign hand has ordered human events to fulfill his eternal purpose and plan despite tremendous obstacles. You see, here's the thing. God is sovereign. He's everything. He's the next breath you take. He's the next bite you eat. He's the, he's the safety from here home. He's everything. You would not exist if He had not brought you into existence. I'm glad I'm a part of the family of God. Washed in the fountain. What is it? Somebody help me. Washed. I can't hear you behind them. 
and my hearing aids are on. <laughs> and I, I can hear pretty good in them. Uh, but what I, what I want us to see is mankind's worst sin, rebellion, and treachery have utterly failed to thwart the grace of God. And for that I say hallelujah. Amen. That's something hallelujah about. You see in this, all of this, every person mentioned there was born a sinner. Everyone. Born dead in trespasses and sins. But God in His good grace was pleased to move in the lives of these people that I'm calling to your attention today. And in the lives of the ones who stand out as being really important. Uh, David, of course, and Abraham, of course, and, and those that, that you find in, in Hebrews 11. But what I'm trying to say, uh, if you, uh, by the way, let me add this too. If you were to compare the genealogy recorded in Matthew 1 with the genealogy that's recorded uh, in, uh, the book of, in the book of Luke chapter 3, it is possible for somebody to conclude that they are, that they don't, they don't, what am I trying to say? It's contradict one another. They don't contradict. Uh, you see, uh, what you have here is the trace by both of the lineage of the Lord Jesus. But Matthew commences with Abraham and follows the line through David to Jesus by way of Joseph's family. Now listen to this. Uh, here it says, And Jacob begot Joseph, in verse 16, a husband of Mary. He doesn't say he's the father of Jesus because Jesus didn't have a human father. He had a human mother, but God Almighty by the Holy Spirit developed the Lord Jesus in human flesh here on the earth. You, I don't know how He did it, but He's God and you can't explain Him. You just have to do what He says and take what He gives. And He said that, uh, uh, that He is... Uh, that he's born of a virgin early in scriptures and in the book of uh, Isaiah talks about it but what I want us to see is simply this uh, Joseph family uh, is what it comes out as when you look at Matthew but when you look at Luke uh, it starts uh, with Jesus and outlines the de genealogy of Mary's family back through, through David all the way to Adam that's the difference in the two. One of, them, one of them starts at Abraham, goes to Jesus. That's this one we're looking at today. The other one in Luke 3. And you look at them when you get home and compare them and see how they uh, uh, speak to you in that. But Matthew t uh, traces the legal descent as king of Israel and Luke traces the lineal descent. Uh, they, they are... And I won't have much more to say. I just want to say uh, that uh, i got to turn that page over. <laughs> but God's covenant with David in 2 Samuel chapter 7 and verse 12. Let me just read that to you. When your days are fulfilled and you rest with your father, I will set up your seed after you who will come from your body and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be his father and he shall be my son. If he commits iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of men and with the blows of the sons of men. And he goes on to say, and your house, your house and your kingdom shall be, uh, you know what, that printer just backed up on me. It just jumped track right there. Uh, but he says in verse 15, But my mercy shall not depart from him as I took it from Saul, whom I removed from, be, uh, from being established forever before you. For the, your throne shall be established forever. Your throne will be established forever. So what are we looking at here? We're simply looking at this record of the lineage as through Matthew 
And we'll note something very unusual about this, this record. There are four women mentioned in it besides Mary. Four women mentioned in it. And historical, historical lineage never had women in it. But now this is God's book. And what I'm trying to tell you is to show you that in these four precious women that, that, were, that were redeemed by God's grace are in the forever family of the sinless woman. If that don't make you hotter, I don't know what will. I'm telling you this morning, beloved, God, God said that, uh, that, you, that you had to be His people and you had, uh, let me say that differently. God says that His people are, are His people and the rest of you, you know, you're left out. But at the same time, people came to know the God of Israel and became believers in Yahweh. God is salvation. Jehovah is salvation. Don't ever forget that. The God of the Old Testament is the God of the New. And the Old Testament, God saved by grace. Listen, you don't get saved any other way. What, what caused Jesus so much problems was the fact that the Jews were in a thing where they were, they were living and, and seeking to be accepted with God because of their works. But works never get you past your front door. Works never saves, never saves anybody. If you could work your soul to save, uh, one, one poet said, I will not work uh, my soul to save for that my God have done, but I'll work like, uh, uh, like a lowly slave for the love of God's dear Son. Amen. So the Bible wants us to understand that God doesn't leave anybody out. In other words, if you're a rebel sinner and God comes to you and saves you, I'm here to tell you, you're in the forever family of God regardless of where you live, where you come from, what you are now, where, what you have been, or whatever else. You've you got to understand, and, and I don't mean to sound uppity about that, but we have to understand that there are only two kinds of people in this world, and that's saved and lost. Amen. Only two kinds. And, and I think about the issues that are going on now and have been just revved up to where there is so much, so much anger. God have mercy on America, because I'm telling you, we're going down the tube in a hurry. And don't let, I'm not saying that to give you, uh, to give you tr uh, trouble in your heart. But I'm here to tell you I believe with all my heart that if the church of Jesus Christ does not experience real revival, that will cause us to have an influence upon our country, then the result will be in 10 years we'll be a third-rate country and a socialist, communist country. I believe that with all my heart standing right here in front of you today and God knows I'm telling you the truth about what I think. But I know what? If the, if the church of Jesus Christ, I'm talking about us folks, ain't none of us praise like we ought to. There's not anybody in this room starting with me that doesn't need to get his heart on fire for God. We all need that desperately. You agree with me? Nod your head. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? It's not the preacher that's more, uh, that is more uh, spiritual than anybody else. I'm here to tell you today, everybody ought to be revved up spiritually. And if we don't have that experience of God's movement in front of us, and I read, I read a chapter out of a book this week, and my soul, it just plowed me up about this matter of revival. But I want to talk this morning about those four women. I want you to see that they, they are women, women that come from, they are outcasts. They are outcasts. They had no place in the, in the, 
the, in the Jewish scheme of things. No place. Women, women were not. I, I tell you what, every woman under the, under the sun ought to bow to King Jesus and rejoice in what he did for women when he came on the scene. But God started it, God the Father started it before he got to, before the Lord Jesus came here. And here are four examples of it right here. Now I won't, I won't, I won't, uh, uh, what time is it? Oh my goodness. Uh, I want us to just, we may not get past one this morning, but I'm going to do the other three tonight. I'm going to finish this today. But I want you to turn with me, if you will, to the, uh, to, uh, as I said, Matthew 1. And I want us to look in verse 3. The Bible says, And Salmon begot Boaz of Rahab. Salmon, whoa, back up. Salmon, I'm sorry, verse 3. I read the wrong verse. That's the next one. Uh, and Judah begot Perez and Zerah of Tamar. Now, do you know who Tamar is? Well, if, if you would like to know, I would recommend you read this afternoon, Genesis chapter 38, verse 7. It'll, it'll, it'll show you what's going on. And not just verse 7, but all of the, the thing. The Bible says that Judah, Judah's firstborn was, a, was wicked in the sight of the Lord. His name was E.R., ER. Uh, that's not the emergency room. That's uh, that's Ur. His name was Ur. And and the Bible tells us about him in chapter thirty-eight of the book of Genesis and verse seven. Ur's, Ur, Judah's firstborn, was wicked in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord killed him. And the Bible tells us that uh, that in that chapter 38 of the book of uh, of the book of Genesis, the Bible tells us this. If I can get there, it's still in there. I think I looked at it earlier. All right, the Bible says that uh, that his next son. Uh, in verse 7, And earth, Judah's firstborn was wicked in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord slew him. And Judah said unto old man, uh, his, his next son, Go into thy brother's wife, as we talked about with Ruth. This is that thing. Fill the, uh, the kinsman redeemer's responsibility and have a son in, in your brother's name. Go in and marry thy brother. Uh, uh, go in unto thy wife and marry her and uh, in thy brother's wife and raise up seed to thy brother but the bible tells us here uh, that this man spitefully refused to father children by tamar and god put him to death also so god's killed two of judah's sons now uh, judah's the line of the of the of the lord jesus he's in that line and, and the Bible tells us that Judah had a younger son. And the Bible says, uh, and, and I want to just come back, uh, that verse, 11, verse, verse 10, And the thing which he did displeased the Lord, wherefore he slew him. Then Judah said to Tamar, his daughter-in-law remain a widow at thy father's house till Sheila my son be grown he uh, lest uh, perhaps he die also as his brethren did and Tamar went and dwelt in her father's house well I won't go into the reading of all of that I'll just say this to show you this here in, Ju in the book of Genesis 38 the Bible says that when she got word that he was traveling by this road, and she, she dressed herself, took all of her widow's garments off. She'd been widowed twice. Took all of her garments off and put on, veiled her face, and went and sat beside the road. And 
his wife had died, uh, Judah's wife had died, and as a result, uh, he was going to share his sheep, and he thought she was a prostitute, so he just stopped off there, and, and it was his daughter-in-law, and he didn't even know it. But she conceived by that occasion, and the Bible tells us that uh, as a result, uh, uh, that uh, she was she she became pregnant, and the scriptures tell tell us about what get, what happened, and, and uh, I want us to be uh, aware today and uh, and uh, realize that uh, that she was frustrated at being childless because that was a word that was a curse upon a woman of that day. If a woman married no children, that was a curse on the woman. I don't know why people think them sort of things, but that, that, that's evidently what's go, was what came about in this. Um, but uh, the Bible tells us that she concocted this evil scheme to be pregnant, dressed up like a prostitute, and upon seeing her, he did like uh, what uh, I said already. Uh, she, got, she had twin sons, Zerah, uh, Perez, and Zerah. Perez, the firstborn, carried on the messianic line. This woman is part of Jesus' ancestry. Hey, think about it. Jesus is not ashamed to have her in his ancestry. All of us have got some that we'd like to leave off, don't we? They, there's probably some that like to leave me off. But what I'm saying today is simply this. He included her in the family of the only Redeemer there is for man provided. Does that make any sense? You see what I'm trying to... I'm trying to simply emphasize the grace of God. That girl in the lineage of Jesus is a miracle of God's grace, but so are you if you have been born again. All kinds of people. Lorry, uh, uh, low down, sorry people that we wouldn't give the time of day to and God loves them. And saves them. Makes use of them to His glory. Aren't you glad you're a part of the family of God? Washed in the fountain, cleansed by the blood. I got it right that time. Washed in the fountain, cleansed by His blood. I'm here to tell you today, I'm going to quit and I'll try my best to finish this more rapidly tonight. But you read, if you will, this afternoon, uh, if you'll just look up those four, uh, those four women that are there and just read where they're found and see if God doesn't bless your heart. It blesses me. I can't help it. I get excited. Uh, I, I, I cherish godly women. I really do. I believe God does. I, I believe that godly women can do more in the home for pointing men and kids to Jesus than anybody. How many, how many people have you heard say, well, my... My mama, I heard a boy tell us, he's a pastor now out at, Smoky, <clears throat> out at Smoky View. And he told, he told his, his, his history up there the other day. He's just been here at the pastor's conference on Monday morning. We have every Monday morning. And that boy said, my mama prayed for my daddy to get saved. One day, the daddy went, Got met a man had a had a men's study Bible study at his home invited him to go and his daddy got saved. He said, "I don't have a question that I got saved when I was eight years old." But he said, "I just went haywire. He just ran away." But God wouldn't let him get out of hand, and now he's he's sharp as a tack. He believes this book. But I was talking about the fact that his mama prayed for his daddy to be saved. 
And mama prays for his children, for her children to be saved. Every one of my children, all of them, have made a broken confession of faith that they've been saved. But only one of them has any use for the church or the Bible. And you know what, folks? If you know what I'm talking about, that's a heartbreak of heartbreaks. That's the heartbreak of heartbreaks, of heartbreaks. When your children don't have time for God. Let me pray for us. I'm quitting. I, I didn't take, I take, I took too long this morning. But you'll forgive me. Lord Jesus, have mercy upon us. We stand before you this morning with a recognition that we're needy, so desperately needy. Oh God in heaven, Lord Jesus, by your Spirit, send uh, that same Spirit to each one of our hearts and give us to be broken over sin and from sin and for sinners and saints alike. Help us, our Father, to have a heart for you above all things else. Cleanse us from every wrong thought, every word, the wrong word, every wrong deed, every wrong motivation. Cleanse us, O oh Lord God, and grant us that we might be to the praise of your glorious grace. Help us to honor you in this word. Thank you for these four women. You know, you've made them a precious blessing to my heart. Knowing the, uh, the, the way that sometimes uh, uh, the women are treated and how they're forced to live and so forth, I, I thank you, my God, that you have simply included these pagan women into your family and into the family of your Holy Son. I thank you today for this word. I pray that you'll drill it into our hearts, that you'd cause it to be the final and absolute authority for all matters of faith and practice, for that's what it is. We have nothing else but you and your word, and, and the way we treat you is the way we treat the Bible, and the way we treat the Bible is the way we treat you. Lord God, help us today. Thank you for these precious people who come for the opportunity I have to speak the word to them in my fumbling manner so often. Speak to us, God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Mm -hmm. church. Thank you for your healing power, your uh, yes. comforting hands. Yes. Lord, just uh, thank you for allowing us to gather to worship, yes. to gather, especially in this uh, season of celebration of our Savior's birth. Lord, just thank you for Brother Chuck and thank you for uh, everything that you're blessing us with and just help us to get uh, through the rest of the year. Uh, and uh, just knowing that uh, 
you're already in the future. You're here with us right now, Lord. And yeah. You are always in control. Just uh, thank you again for allowing us to gather, for blessing us, for loving us. All these things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 <coughs>